Okay, so I found some velvet purple, and then we've got the white and the black again to go in with the next series of colours. Now, exactly the same applies to this. We're going to start in the top right-hand corner, add with the white straight away, and then add a little bit of purple, and then keep going down. But it's important to have your previous card of the reference of your previous yellows. So then, at the end, we can combine the two colours, all the... Um, six the two so the the 12 um colors um see which ones match and what you can do is start cutting them up and put into color combinations and then putting that forward to a larger composition um i mean it's good to just play around with colors i think that's the point of this exercise is to get used to mixing simple colors maybe one or two colors together um and understanding the multitude of tones you can create there. Okay, so we're gonna go white. That's got a little bit of yellow on it from the previous, so what I'm gonna do, get a little bit more white there. <coughs> so we're just gonna go white again, and a little bit of purple, and we get that lighter purple coming in there. That's how extreme you want it. I mean, you could do like a series of eight colours or ten. You know, tone changes you want or you want to play around with. But just each time, add more white to get a brighter tone. How white you want to go. I say that's fine for the brightest of colours of what we want to do here. For this exercise. It's still relatively bright because it's got a lot of purple in it and no black. And then we're just going to paste that on there. And then we've got a nice pinky purple. That original lightest tone. Again, we go across. Get more purple in there. A bit more white. Roll your brush as well. Get that remnant soft. I think that's important. When you mix colour, keep rolling your brush. If you've got a, a large brush like this, keep rolling your brush each time. You want a unanimous colour on your palette before you start applying. So let me just wipe that. And again, try and get used to that rolling method and mixing. Okay, so we've got a nice mid-tone here. So bright, so full of colour. And very distinguishably different to the previous tone. Okay, and then we keep going, keep going back into that purple, adding less white each time. So that ratio is different. This is going to be quite a dark purple, so we're going to add a lot of the original purple from above there. Like that again. I think you can use that. That's a perfect colour for that tone change. And again, that will leave us another one. If we wanted to go darker, we could go there and add a lot more purple. That would be a much darker purple. But we're not. We're going to keep to that. We'll wipe the brush. And we're going to go back to the white. And we're going to come down here now. So what you should have is very similar to what we had before. Very light purple. Like that. What we are going to do this time, we are going to give it a black. Okay, so what we do have is a very light greyish purple. Keep that purple alive, keep adding more of the colour, so you can still see that colour, we don't want just the grey, we want the black to influence but not dominate the colour. And then we're going to go on here and already you see such a difference, such a much cooler purple and it's influenced so much by the black, we've got a completely different shade of purple. And we're going to go again over here, add more purple, 
white again, and then the black. So it appears darker. I mean, let's have a look. I mean, that's the interesting thing you can see there. The colour combination. You say, well, it's darker. Well, it's not darker. It's just duller. That's actually just got more saturation of purple. That's got more black in it. It's dulled it down. It's cooled it down. It's a darker light. Black doesn't necessarily make things darker. It's the ratio you add with it, with the white, and how much of the colours in it, the original colour, whatever you're using. So the last tone we're going to do is over here on the bottom left, and we're going to add go straight to the black there, which is grey. I've still got the remnants of the white coming in. We've got some more purple there. What I'm doing, I'm trying to make it levelled, maybe in its intensity as that, to show you the difference what black can do to a tone. And then let's just apply that over here. Yeah. And then you've got our six colours. Now, this is going to be compared to the yellows. Let's take the palette away for a second. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got all the colours we need to do our complementary tones. Now, as I said in the previous video, I remember I said it earlier, the darker desaturated tones, which are here and here, they are naturally going to ba balance with the complementary saturated version of their colour. So these colours will balance nicely with the more pungent yellows and the dull yellows are going to balance nicely with the pungent purples. So, like I said, you could have copied this exactly the way I did it, or you can use red and green, or you can use blue and orange, they're all the other complementaries, and try it yourself, see how many colour combinations you can get, maybe do some more than me, maybe do about ten or five, five of each tone, um, see what you want to do. And then what I'm going to do in the next video, maybe probably somewhere down the line, I'm going to start putting these colours together and maybe do a still life or something. You can see um, the impact um, complementary colours can make on each other and the way to use complementary colours. And obviously the first piece of advice I've given you is obviously the desaturated goes with saturated. For, for, some, for example, foreground and background, um, but then we'll look at more things later on.